Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. How cool is this? We're all here on a Wednesday doing photos. I know, photos. Well, photos and flowers. You know, all the important stuff. So we have photos, flowers, and coffee. All the important stuff. It's been a crazy busy day, but it's been a great day. And we are ready for you. We are with a full house, which makes it grand fun. You stuck with me for a minute before I introduce Ricky. So hi, I'm Leanne. Nice to meet you. I'm a tulip. Then right in front of me, we have teacher Michelle. She's with you on Facebook and she'll be looking for your questions. So as you think of things that you want to know about photography, type it in there. And don't forget, this is a collaboration. So introduce yourself, get to know the fellow tulips, put in there, hi, this is Leanne, I'm in Portland, Oregon. You'll be surprised how often you might encounter someone that's nearby and you can start building some peer relationships and maybe even build a friend. On this side, I have teacher Carolyn. She's with you on YouTube and we'll be watching for your comments, your concerns, your questions, all of that. And also, Assistant Hitomi is with us today and she will be perusing the social, looking for your thoughts and making sure to help vocalize them out. Virtually with us, you know the drill. We've got Caledonia on Facebook, we have Susie on YouTube and they're greeting you and they'll make sure that we see your questions as well and try to get it done. If you're on your phone, Turn it sideways, you'll get a bigger picture. If the comments are in the way, give it a swipe. That'll hide the comments, then you can swipe it back later. As I was getting ready, I was like, oh, I gotta have flowers, I gotta get flowers. And so I'm like, okay, I've got all my flowers, life is good. Then I was like, but what about everything else? Let's see, I'm gonna put the phone over here so it doesn't distract me. What about everything else? We're talking photography and photos. Photos are so incredibly important. Way more than when I started in the floral world. I don't even have any pictures of my first work because it wasn't something we did. Not like now where it doesn't exist if it doesn't have a photo. Then photography was actually expensive, inconvenient, and I had to laugh because I went back and grabbed my last film camera David, you recognize this. You bought this for me because you wanted me to be out there taking pictures. You're like, Leanne, you got to take pictures. And we still have two rolls of film. So then I was wondering, oh my gosh, is there something on there? But no, it's not used either. But remember having to go by film, getting it thread in, making sure that it was working right? Oh my gosh. And then those little box cameras that were that instant that had the film already in them and you just took the camera in to have it developed. And then you had to wait and come back maybe a week later to pick up your pictures. Does that seem like a whole different era? I know there are people that still do film photography, purists, because it is different. Not me. So I'm going to put this one away now too. Then, as I was gathering things, David, another blast from the past. You recognize this one. You got me my first digital camera. And you're like, now Leanne, take more pictures. Film is cheap. And you got the digital camera, and I learned to use it, and I never got good at it. And that's why we're here today, because you do need to get good at it. Photography is a big deal, and you need to be able to do it. Luckily, with phones, kind of a little bit easier. And if you have a digital camera, it's easier. And you don't have to worry about film because that doesn't exist. And it makes your life so much better. Still, it's not my forte. I like to make pretty and say, will you get me a good picture of that? And when I do that, I say, hey, Ricky, can you get me a good picture of this? And you've heard us talk about that frequently. Oh, and Ricky's over here making us stay alive. She's got all the technology under control. Her official title is assistant to the creative director. Her job description is that she is everything digital. So if you see it, 
come from Floral Design Institute and it says Leanne? Leanne didn't do that. Leanne did nothing. Ricky does everything. If you see a photograph, guess who? You see a video, guess who? You get an email, guess who? Yeah, you get the drill. So anything digital, that is her creative genius. She started working with us almost a year ago. Not quite, but it's coming up on a year. And she had graduated from San Francisco from the Arts Academy, or Academy of Arts, uh, and got her fine arts degree with a focus in photography. Thus, that's where she's great. So she showed up for her interview and she had her portfolio and it's all digital and you know, it's all digital. And David and I are sitting there and we didn't even talk for 15 minutes and David said, hire her. And you know what? It's been perfect. So Ricky, come on up. We got to get you introduced and then we'll do some flowering. So finally you get to see the face. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Being on this side of the camera is different. Yeah, it's weird. The lights are so bright. <laughs> I, know. I, know, I know that, but... But you're brighter. on the other side, yeah. and I'm always like, I have to have it in my eyes. Now you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it was funny, because I came in this morning, and I'm like, Ricky, how tall are you? Because it had never even occurred to me to consider how we would be on set, because when I'm with people, I'm always like, do I wear shoes? Do I not wear shoes? <laughs> We're close to the same. Isn't this great? We don't have fancy shoes on. So you can do this more often. I think you may have to come on this okay. side. I love it. So now when you were in college, mm -hmm. you had done a project, and I love this, food-based, mm -hmm. where you photoed food. And you know, food, flowers, all kind of the same thing. Tell them a little bit what you did there, because I thought it was fascinating. The food yeah. of countries? Yeah, I did a project that was entirely based on the average American's view of other countries, but I took like portrait style photographs of food from other countries. So like for Italy, I did a portrait style of spaghetti. For Japan, I did sushi. Uh, Mexico, I think I did tacos, but then of course I had to throw America in there. So and I did, did McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> How fun is mm -hmm. that? So then do you find flowers, foods, similar? I do, yeah. They're, um, everything is still life that I do um, apart from landscape photography. So it's just a different version of still life photography. It's just a different subject matter, but it's still the same like process for me. So you don't see different issues mm -hmm. with the flowers than food? Oh, no, there's some differences, but it's, it's relatively the same process. You can't eat your flowers. No, that's, that's true. <laughs> you can't eat most of the food photography either. <laughs> well, that's probably true. Oh, my gosh. So now you get to see a face on the camera. Teacher Michelle. So I have a question for Ricky. On your food photography, what's the strangest thing you've had to do to a plate to make it look like it's edible, but it's not really? Um, in high school, I did a photo of chocolate chip cookies, only they were entirely non-edible. I think I used like some type of clay, and then the chocolate chips were melted brown crayons. So it was, it looked yummy, but you couldn't eat it whatsoever. Oh, I love it. Oh <laughs> yeah. my gosh. So the plan today, so that you are in on it too, is Ricky and I are going to tag team. I'm going to make an arrangement then she's gonna show you how you would photo it and talk you through the process. So while I'm doing an arrangement right now, I'll let you go and finish what you need to do over there. <laughs> um, and then I need you to think about what questions you have. Type in anything that you want to get into Ricky's head. And then it'll be, I'm gonna to try to do a speed design. It's gonna be about five minutes. And then Ricky will be right back up and we'll start in on photos. So get your comments, questions, thoughts typed in there. Go. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab, I thought, some roses. These are um, roses I had left over from class the other day. They're Eskimo, one of my favorites. They are just grand. Not a super fragrant rose, but they open nicely and they're pretty white white, which is nice. But that's not your concern. You want to talk photography, so I'll go faster. Hydrangea. Carnations. Okay. 
So trying to go with things that you would have in your world that you could easily get that you might want to make into an arrangement. Some green hypericum. And everything's been prepped already. If you know the drill, think basic floral design. It's all prepared. Everything is clean, denuded. There's no thorns. And I'm going to start with a couple hydrangeas and then some roses. Bringing them in, giving it a turn, and timing myself to see if I can get it done in five minutes because I said, okay, we gotta focus on photography, but we need flowers. So, trying to do both. While I do this, are there any questions starting to come in yet? Not yet on YouTube, but I would like to give a shout out to Shaquana, who's joining us for the first time live today, and then she's also just joined us in Flower School. Hi, Shaquana. I got to talk to her yesterday. I lose track of days. I think it was yesterday we chatted. And um, I believe she just joined the Tulip Bunch as well so that she can get to know people, the private Facebook group, and be part of that group of people as she continues through her studies. So welcome. Is this your first time? Did you say it was her first time on live? Is it, or? Yes, I did. Okay, so a welcome to Shikana from everybody. If you can. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I apologize if I'm not. Actually, I think it's Shikana. Oh, I don't remember. Okay, well, I am sorry if I have butchered your name because that was not intentional. Okay. And I'm just continuing to add, adjusting my height on some things so that it's not totally flat. And I can reach in. Give it a little tug to get even more height on there. She says her friends call her Shaq. Shaq, okay, well that, then we don't even have to know how to say it. So we're gonna pretend we're friends, best friends, best flower friends. So hi Shaq, glad you're here. It's fun. Um, we had the designing for competition class this last week, and it was just a delight to have so much talent in the classroom. And so if any of you were in class, I just want you to know I'm still thinking about you. And just want you to know the classroom is clean now. We got it all cleaned up after you. Thanks for doing such a good job to get most of it clean before you even left, which makes my life easier because we're getting ready. Uh, We've got the Rose Festival princesses coming into the classroom. Oh, I forgot to put the high care come in. You know, that's why you lay it out so you don't forget something, but I'm almost out of my minute, so maybe I'll just do it as a collar around the side because I can't take up all the time just making an arrangement. Oh, somebody special chimed in. And her name is Denise. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody, say a big hello, Mom, to Denise because she's watching her daughter live today, which is a pretty exciting thing. And Denise, we love Ricky. Thank you for sharing her with us because we couldn't do it without her. That is for sure. She has been the most wonderful resource for all of us because if it weren't for her we couldn't share it with you you know everything you see is because of Ricky so oh I should put a little bit of leaf on there because you're gonna need to talk about that <gasps> almost forgot okay I've got one minute left that's it and then we'll be bringing Ricky back up so all I did was just make a hand tie and now I'm putting a collar in And if I did that so fast, because it was a five minute hand tie and you didn't learn it, go back to your flower school lesson because you learned it in there. It's the exact same thing. It's just that I did it fast and I used maybe different flowers than when you saw it in my flower school. So same story, no changes there. Then I'm gonna drop it into this vessel. So I need to cut the stems down 
So I'm going to step a little bit to the side. And Ricky, when you come back up, let's see what you have to say about this. And hopefully I gave you something that you are capable of working with. And don't say, Leanne, can you fix it? <laughs> Which has happened. You know, sometimes she'll come and get me. She's like, Leanne, I can't even tell where the front is. I'm like, I know. Okay, well, let me fix it. She's like, did you mean to have this here? I'm like, well, mm, no, maybe not. So she's good at catching my mistakes. Okay, write it down in. Okay, she's your baby now. All right. Um, so when I'm taking photos, the first thing I do is I kind of just look at the overall arrangement. Um, I think about what type of like background I want to use. So this is a white and green. I would probably choose like a plain cream colored background or maybe a complementary color to the green so that it kind of pulls that green out more and makes it stand out. Um, or alternatively, I would use like a fabric, a tablecloth of some sort that would also complement the green. Um, I think many of you have seen it in our photos. I have a, like a pink table runner that I use in so many of the photos, but it's because it looks nice with the flowers. So that was the first one that comes to mind. Yes, Michelle. So when you use fabric, are there any considerations about the type of fabric, like the texture or the surface quality? Um, there is. I don't like to use fabric that's too shiny, uh, just because it's going to catch the light in weird ways. Um, I also don't like to use fabric that's too like patterned, because I think that's just going to take away from the flowers themselves. Um, your main focus should be the flowers, which is why I like to use like plain backgrounds, plain fabrics, um, to, but just things that complement them. Do you work with the color wheel when you're doing that? Is that sort I of do. in your mind? Yeah, I have, um, after many years of art school, I have a built-in color wheel in my head. So, um, and I do like tint tone, tints, tones, and shades of the color wheel. So with this green, greens I like to do more pinks versus reds because if you do red with complementary, it gets too Christmassy feeling. But if you do a pink, you're staying on that complementary side, but toning it down. Um, so yeah. So the same things we teach when it comes to flowers, you're just adding that concept into the photography. Mm -hmm. So when I do a hand tie like this, because we do this frequently and you've got to shoot it and then I stick it in a vessel. Do you prefer them in the vessel or do you like to do them freestanding? Does it have a difference to you one way or the other? I think it depends on the like type of hand tie. So when you tell me, oh, this would be like a bridal bouquet, that I would prefer to do freestanding because at a wedding you're not going to see a bouquet in a vessel most likely unless like the bread is completely done with it and it's just sitting off to the side. But when it's more of like a hand tie that's meant to be in a vessel for like a centerpiece or like a statement um, piece as you like walk in the door, then obviously keeping it in the vessel itself. Cool. So do we have, yeah, Hitomi. A couple of people on the YouTube side asked, what are the best lighting, artificial or natural? Ooh, that is tough because I'm a big fan of natural light personally, but my work here is mostly artificial light. Um, I do get a little bit of natural light in the photo set that I built, but most of it comes from artificial. Um, and I do have an example. One of these is probably the best if you're gonna use artificial light. This is just a simple ring light. I bought it for $6 at Lowe's. You can probably find them on Amazon. It comes with this built-in phone tripod. It has its own stand. It just plugs into a USB. And you can change like the color temperature if you want it more white light, more warm toned, things like that. Um, but this would be great if you're just doing like small in-studio shots that you just need like a quick, easy, one and done, but like great lighting. So it just gives you that little more boost. boost. Mm -hmm. um, Outside, you can get great natural light, but any time inside, even if you got windows, it never seems to be bright enough. Right. You mm -hmm. do kind of need to ex like expose more, which is allowing more light into your camera. Um, and that can either be done in camera or in post, depending on whether or not you know editing softwares. 
I love it. There you go. Ten <laughs> terms yeah. in camera or post. And that's where Leanne says, oh, I love this, but could you make it pretty? That's post. Yeah. <laughs> Teacher Michelle. So Mindy had a question which ties in with post-production. Mm -hmm. How much retouching of the photography do you do? Um, not much, honestly. I prefer... Because we do it. Yes, so much. because Leanne does such a good job. <laughs> <laughs> no, I prefer to do almost everything in camera. The few things that I do in post are just adjusting the colors to make sure that they look more accurate to the natural eye um, and occasional lighting adjustments. Cool. Um, Debbie would like to know where would you place the ring light? Oh, that's, that's a, a good, good question. Good job, Debbie. Thank okay, you. Okay, we need more great questions out there. Keep them coming. Let's see. So if I was shooting this, I'd probably have it a little taller. I prefer to shoot with my lights more like a 45 degree angle down. That's also technically, um, typically where I would place my camera is a little bit higher up. Um, just so that I can see more of the full arrangement versus if I was just looking at it like straight on, it becomes very flat, very 2D. When you bring it up just even the slightest bit, um, you can see everything that's in it, all of the different depths and shades and stuff like that. So I would do the same thing with the light, just bring it up just a little bit. That way you kind of have soft light falling on everything. So because this is all in one, one deal mm -hmm. your camera so the lights actually behind the camera looking straight on mm -hmm. and then you're shooting in this direction too yes. okay now i understand i had to stop and be like okay but yeah <laughs> so it's going to come straight the light will come straight on but from an upper level mm -hmm. so yeah if you bring it up you have um less likely to get like really hard shadows which you want to avoid once you get hard shadows you kind of lose all of the information that exists in those shadows um, so if you have softer shadows you can see more things in your arrangement interesting okay teacher michelle so talking about lighting carrie wondered what's the best way to capture the depth in an arrangement that we can see but usually gets flattened in the photos any tricks for that um, I think it's all, that would be mostly like camera angles, um, where you're positioning your camera. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how to answer that one properly. <laughs> Can you rephrase it in some way? I'm not capturing yeah, that yeah, one so. either. I'm, not, I'm like, okay, how am I going to help here? Yeah. <laughs> so you were just talking about getting the softer amount of light, which changes the shadows, which mm -hmm. would give us depth. So she was asking the best way to capture that, and that it, I'm assuming it's adjusting the brightness of the light to get those softer shadows to give you depth? You can adjust, yeah, okay. the brightness of the light. Um, the position of the light. Obviously, the brighter the light is, the harsher those shadows are going to be, um, because it's going to like just focus on all of your highlights, which would be like the whites. Even this green would pick up a highlight, but then your fascia leaves would lose, like they would get lost in the shadows. So, having a softer, like more toned down light versus like a very bright, harsh one would help. And you said, too, as you were talking there, the angle, and that, mm -hmm. that registered with me because I think of it when I take pictures outside, how all of a sudden I've got angles and shadows, and if I move around, sometimes I get the correct shot that doesn't have as many. So mm -hmm. it's probably adjusting that light intensity yes, and then moving where you are. Yeah, it's much easier to move your camera and change the angle that way than it is to move the arrangement. Um, so moving around and working with your arrangement instead of expecting your arrangement to do the work for you. Is that why when we watch you and photographers and such, they're mostly handheld, they're not leaving it on a tripod because mm -hmm. they need to move and get it? Yeah, I, there's, I don't know, tripod purists, photographers that love tripods, I'm not one. Um, I like to, you know, get on the ground to get my angles, to crawl That's on top of young. a building. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> but yeah, I think there's just so much more like that you can do with a camera handheld than you can with a tripod that kind of limits you to your height, your angle, everything like that. Excellent. Um, 
Do you want to, you had talked about your fabric on the bottom. Do you mm -hmm. want to show them a picture of that? I think you have oh, one yes. in there. And that way they can see that. And then while you're kind of showing that, I'll get ready for another arrangement so that we've got another one to talk about. But um, yeah. is it up there now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so tell us about that. So this is the pink fabric that I mentioned. Um, this is a purple one that you've also probably seen a lot. But um, with this fabric, I'm pulling out the color of those hyacinths a lot more. I'm kind of drawing um, that purple more in because when you first look at this, the first few things I see are the white urn and then the orange tulips. And so the hyacinth kind of get lost in those shadows, but by bringing in a purple fabric on the bottom, it kind of leads these like parallel lines throughout the photo of just purple and compliments it nicely. <laughs> I love that particular picture because um, that was Linda's flowers and those purple mm -hmm. hyacinths looked amazing with that fabric. It just really pulled it all together. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So while she brings it back up to us, any questions before we go to the next design? Yes. Sandy would like to ask what kind of camera do you use, Ricky? I use a good old iPhone camera. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Yeah, I think um, the biggest game changer with phone cameras is that you can now, this isn't gonna make sense to people who aren't photographers, but you can now shoot photos in RAW, which basically means that like you have all of the information you could possibly get out of your image while you're taking it in your phone camera now. Whereas before it was just like a normal JPEG, which is essentially a flat image. You know, when, um when we got the cameras, we did the phone cameras for everybody so that everybody could take pictures and do all that. Um, and when David was getting his and mine and yours and such, he's like, oh, look at this, it does raw format. I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and then as Ricky started working with it, she's like, oh my gosh, I can do everything in raw. And I'm like, oh, dear. <laughs> um, but yes, that is what's amazing about the iPhone anymore you have as much power in your pocket as what we used to have in these great big cameras mm -hmm. it's just kind of scary how grand it is it's, yeah it's really crazy <laughs> i love it so do you have anything else you want to share with them before i make the next arrangement am i forgetting anything about this uh, one no i think you're good to start on the next one anything from you guys no? i have a whole list so i'm trying to fix myself <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'll let you move that away. I'm going to do one now that when I create, Ricky's like, oh, really tall. Because when you think about it, when we send you an email, the picture is horizontal. Yeah. And I'm going, mm -hmm. and when you think about our studio, I bring in these flowers, and pretty soon, I'm totally off camera, and you're like, okay, Leanne, bring it back down. And I'm always like, okay, Ricky, am I in camera? And she's like, yeah, whatever, not again. Um, and it does make her crazy. So I thought, you know, the reality is in your flower shops, you don't make everything short and round. You do some things that are tall. And I cut that one a little bit shorter than I meant to, but we'll get it stood up there because I want it to be tall to make her frustrated. Um, this is kind of one of those say, ha, I made it tall whether you want it tall or not. Um, so these are parakeets. And those of you that were in class last week know that these are left over from your class because we use, reuse, recycle. We don't let anything go to waste. Okay, my mechanics are floral netting rather than foam, which also creates a little bit of an issue when she's trying to do her photos because things move. You can see that, it's going all cattywampus on me. And she's gotta figure out how to get it from the studio upstairs to the photo set without changing where everything is. And of course, it does change where everything is. And so, it can make her a little bit of a designer because just like a delivery person has to adjust the flowers after they get delivered sometimes, she's got to adjust them in the studio. Now, I could help her by taking 
and enhancing with hydrangeas, which will help hold things in place. If I get them tucked in well, there we go. And repeat that, but I don't always do that. Sometimes it just isn't going to be a hydrangea type bouquet. And so all of a sudden she has to figure out what I meant, where those flowers were supposed to be, and then adjust them accordingly. And I'm going to turn it facing me so I can get my placement. Like I need to move that one. There we go. And I decided to do this one with orange because orange is Ricky's favorite color. So now you know something else about her. She loves orange. And she has a favorite flower. And I don't know if you all have ever had the opportunity to know this. So before I go further and tell you what it is, let's see if people can guess what her favorite flower is. Hint, it's not traditionally orange. But that's all I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you anything else. So what do you think her favorite flower might be? So now I'm adding in leucodendron because I want some depth of color. Because now I have white, which is aggressive and comes at you. And I have burgundy, which is recessive and pulls away from you which is going to create a little bit more complication in photography. So while I finish this, any questions out there? Uh, lots of questions, but I want to give out a shout out first to Rebecca. She's a first time viewer on live. She's late today because she has just dropped off flowers for her first wedding. And she's also just enrolled in our online basic course. Ha <laughs> ha, Rebecca, welcome first time. Welcome to flower school. It's amazing. We've been really busy with new students this week. I think people are realizing, oh my gosh, summer's coming, flowers are blooming, it's time to go to flower school. And I will have to say, yes, it's time to go to flower school. So what else is going on out there? So I have a couple of questions that are, are related. Um, one, people were asking what iPhone version you're working with. And do you have any standard basic settings that always seem to deliver a good photo for you? Um, the phone that I work with is an iPhone 12 Pro. Um, that's the one I work with here. And then my personal one is the 14, but the camera is basically the same. And then as far as settings go, um, apart from keeping it in RAW for my personal editing preferences, um, I don't change too much in the settings. I shoot in the highest quality that the iPhone camera allows. Um, and I don't know off the top of my head what that is. It's the like 4K video, same photo one. And then um, I pretty much just change the exposure. So lighter or darker. Okay, cool. You have to talk to your boss, see if they can get you a better camera. <laughs> okay, so I'm just about done here. You'll notice that none of the arrangements today are designed for arrangement. So you notice I haven't been teaching while I work with this because today we're talking photography. So all I'm doing today as far as the designs is creating something for Ricky to be able to teach the photography side of things. So I've got Aspidistra, Leucodendron, some Carnations, some Hydrangea, Parakeet Heliconia, and Lori, I have a question for you also, Ricky. Would you be willing to share a picture of your photo set that you use? Some folks are wondering if you use a photo box or if you have a light table or maybe you could include that in the Tulip Bunch later? Yes, I'll post it in the Tulip Bunch because I forgot to take a photo of it. I was going to do that and I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, because you guys will enjoy seeing it because you know you don't have to spend a bucket of money to have it right. 
And when Ricky said she wanted to set this, I was like, well, okay, how many hundreds of thousands of dollars is that going to be? And she's like, oh no, it's, it's not a big deal. I just need to do this, this, and this. And sure enough, it is done wonderfully and gives us great photos and it's just simple. So that'll be fun for you to see because it's always nice to know that it's not necessary to be crazy when you're putting your stuff together. Because sometimes that's just prohibitive in itself. You get panic stricken that, oh, I can't do it because I don't have that or this or the other thing. And the reality is you've got everything you need. So, okay, I'm gonna stop there. So I have a vertical arrangement that is too tall, that is not even on camera because I <laughs> overshot it on purpose. Um, this was intentional, so no blaming of Leanne. I'm gonna move it back here for a minute just so that you can see the whole thing, but this would be one of the nightmares that I would pass to Ricky and say, okay, make this lovely and fit in our horizontal email. Okay, right, back to you. How are we gonna fix this? <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so knowing that this has to be a horizontal image at the final, I have to either decide to make my sides super huge, so have a lot of like empty space on either side of the arrangement, or I have to decide to cut off the container. Um, one thing I've learned working with Leanne is she would rather have the container cut off and more focus on the flowers than try and fit the entire thing in one. Um, but that's a personal preference, so depending on what you want the final outcome to be is going to depend on whether or not you have those empty sides or if you have the cut off container. But I'm going to switch to my iPhone so we can take a look at what I'm doing in the camera. Okay, this is this magic moment. I thought this was the coolest thing when she told me she could do this. I will not oh point it at my Oh my gosh. Feet. Okay. There look at that! Are. Oh my goodness! Yes, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> I have to keep looking at the camera. <laughs> so when I'm taking photos, um, I try to keep a lot of space on top and a lot of space on bottom, which allows for those empty sides. Um, I personally am not a horizontal shooter, especially not in the iPhone, just because I know a lot of our stuff is going to end up on social media. A lot of social media postings are vertical nowadays. Um, I always feel a little strange when I see a horizontal one. But, um, so I would kind of pull back further to allow all of this room around the arrangement. Take a couple photos. And then if I go here, and I click edit, um, it's going to pull up this screen and I can choose to crop it. And they have a lot of different sizes listed. I can choose to make it um, kind of like a, a horizontal one, maybe if I can find the right one. Nope, it's going to do all vertical. Never mind, I can free crop it. <laughs> yeah. Now um, you had a grid on there when it first came up on screen. Do you yes. use that? for centering or deciding where the middle of the photograph is going to be? Um, I use the grid as a reminder. Um, I've taken enough photos and I've done photography long enough now that I have a built-in grid in my brain as well, just like my color wheel. Um, but it's a nice reminder that, um, I'm sure everyone's heard this in photography, you follow the rule of thirds, which is placing lines on kind of these areas. So you want like your emphasis to be there, um, or you can center it. I typically center and then when I'm resizing and cropping images, that's when I pull in the rule of thirds and change things around. Um, but it's a good reminder to have the grid if you don't know what you should be looking for in your camera. And since we have darker flowers in here, yes. we have a question on how do you make darker flowers pop? Um, so that, I would say, is where changing my exposure settings comes into play. So I kind of have it set up at the top here. I just click on that and this is my exposure. And I would just make it a little bit brighter and adjust to pull in the color of those darker flowers more. Oh yeah, it shows up on camera. Mm -hmm. 
so that's normal and then I just kind of adjust to make that's it a little cool. bit brighter. Is that very similar to the little sun that's yes. in the center that you can touch to move up and down? It is the exact same. So okay. here's my sun and if I move it up and down that's also adjusting my exposure. However, with the camera raw settings, you get the more in-depth exposure adjustments. Very cool. So then, now you've seen how she adjusts for a little different one, and adjusting the light by the sun or whatever mm -hmm. to get focus on too. Do you find that if you, and this is, this is a question from me, mm -hmm. Does it show better if you adjust on the backdrop or on the bottom, or does that really not make any difference? For you know, the like light. to get different color of flowers, um, do you have a favorite backdrop color to get best, or does it matter? Um, I the same thing as like choosing a fabric that's complementative. I would choose a background color that's complementative. So with how dark these are, I would probably choose a very light background, a very something that's going to reflect the light back so that way when I position my light in front here it's also pulling light from the background and highlighting these darker areas. Um, as well I use a reflector to kind of angle the light more um, and that just allows for more light to come in. You know, and one thing, I'll have to share a trick that I've seen her do when I make her crazy with these things, is that she'll set a vignette so that she's got the arrangement and then she'll put something else and then she'll mm -hmm. put something else to give herself a cross bit of flowers so that she can still get in close. And that's the one trick that works really well that I've seen you do. It's like, okay. Yeah, I kind of add things into the space. <laughs> or I know one time... Um, we ended up with arrangement, 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 the exact same picture, but going across so that it gave me a horizontal thing of a vertical design. So there's creative ways to go at mm -hmm. it. Oh my gosh. So questions. And you brought up vignette, which is a perfect segue into this question, if they were wondering what are some good tips for choosing good vignettes? What makes a good vignette? Oh, thinking about Ooh. the one you've done with the books and stuff up there. You've done some interesting right. things. Um, I think things that relate to the flowers but don't take away from the flowers. So like the books that um, in that one photo, the arrangement itself had citrus in it. So I put the fruit, the same fruit around it. Um, and then all of those books that I used were gardening and flower related, like flower care and handling books. Um, but I kind of like to, this is one thing that I've seen from other flower photographers that I enjoy, is they kind of take like petals or little pieces of the arrangement, kind of scatter them around. I think the, um, doing that adds very nicely to the overall portrayal of the design, but yeah. I just noticed your earrings. Yeah, I wear my camera earrings. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. I'm sitting here staring. It's like, are they really? They yeah. are. <laughs> I wear the cameras. Michelle. So Monica has an excellent question. She said, when it comes to editing after the fact, and you notice something like the counter, there's a line next to the counter, or between the counters, mm -hmm. um, what is your favorite program to use when selective editing isn't an option? when selective editing isn't an option? So like when I can't get rid of this? Uh, I'm assuming that's what she means. That's like, okay. So it. like when I gave you those pictures that all had a plug-in on the wall, <laughs> what did you use to make that plug-in disappear? <laughs> I used Photoshop. <laughs> uh, okay. Photoshop is my best friend and I took a really long time to learn it and there's no good crash course into Photoshop. It takes years of work to learn but yeah you have done the magic with that because <laughs> I know that we try really hard to give you good content to work with mm -hmm. but the reality is like there was the one that I needed that peony in and I only had one dead peony right and you made it look alive and you guys will never find that arrangement <laughs> because you would not know it was a dead peony and it was really kind of front and center and i'm just like ricky can't you make it look alive please 
And she did. So that was your Photoshop expertise. <laughs> <laughs> and I know another thing about Ricky, you may not know, she has a second job and all you do is Photoshop stuff, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, all I do is I add people into group photos, I remove random things in the background. It's really like nitty gritty Photoshop work. I love it. Well, this is made more fun because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. So other questions? Yes, I have a whole list still here. Um, do you have any apps that are favorite? Do you work with any phone apps for editing, tweaking? Um, I use the Lightroom app on the phone. Um, that is a paid subscription to Adobe, unfortunately. Uh, I think there is a free version, but otherwise I just use the like in-app editing software that the photos app on your phone gives you so like where you go to see all of your photos there is that edit button that has the same thing as any other photo editing app is going to um, so that one is probably the one I use the most on like my personal phone and then um, as far as like for editing for social media purposes, I really like the Unfold app. If you're a big fan of Instagram stories, that one is fantastic. You can It gives you so many different templates of things that you can add in um, and kind of make your photos look more aesthetic than you maybe originally took them. And that tees up the next question. Do you do anything differently for social media photos versus maybe something you'd put on your website? picture of an arrangement definitely I think um, website stuff is more portfolio worthy things so things that you want your best foot forward whereas social media I feel like you can be a little looser it can be more friendly more I don't want to say amateur or unprofessional but just kind of easier simpler yeah Whereas like your website should be very polished, very nice, because um, that's essentially where every, everyone's going to the, your website to find your work. So you want your best work there. Whereas on social media, you can just be a little bit more friendly. So I'm designing at the same time that you talk because I know we wanted to get a third one in, but I don't want to take away from your question and answer. So, um, Carolyn, Michelle, keep talking. Give her her questions. I'll poke so that she's got one more arrangement to shoot with, but um, we don't want to take away from time for her to talk flowers. Sandy had a really great question. Are there certain color of flowers that are more difficult to photograph? Ooh. I haven't run into that too much. Um, Not personally for me that I find more difficult. Um, yeah. I find that in a natural setting when we're on location, um, photographing really dark purple, mm, mm -hmm. like next to, that's on the background of green and next to some lighter colors, that tends to be very difficult to get those dark colors to really pop. Right. That that's when um, your kind of like exposure adjustments come mm -hmm. into play. So Kim had a question. Well, actually, multiple people have the question. I have a little hash mark next to how many times <laughs> it's been asked. Any tips or tricks for doing stuff with the camera physically, like tricks, tips, anything for that? Um, I guess just like moving the camera itself, you can kind of, um, if your arrangement is on the ground and you can't get low enough to get that photo, you can always flip your phone upside down. That gives you a different angle and then through editing, you can just kind of flip it back to the right side up. Um, that one's probably the easiest that most people wouldn't think of. Is Turn just, the phone upside down. Yeah, just put your phone right upside down your camera will be at that lower angle that you can't get to even laying on the ground. And then you can always just turn the photo the right way up. That's a cool trick. I'm going to have to try that. <laughs> <laughs> so then what I'm doing is just, again, another quickie. 
to give you something to show with your camera because it's kind of fun to see what you shoot. Mm -hmm. And then what I think would be fun, and I shouldn't probably say this live, but I'm going to, wouldn't it be fun to have her edit the picture that she takes in here and then take the arrangement in the studio upstairs and put them side by side so that you can see the difference of when she's got all of her light and all of her stuff. So now I just threw you under the bus. Great. <laughs> Another photo for tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. In your spare time when you have nothing else to do, although we're filming first in the morning, don't forget. Right. <laughs> oh, and uh, several people have asked in a row, uh, we didn't hear, what is her favorite flower? I'll let you go. It's the one on my wrist. Um, iris flowers, they're my favorite. I love it. When I was a kid, uh, my neighbors growing up had an iris that smelt like root beer. And ever since then, it's been my favorite flower. The root beer flower. <laughs> That's funny. Well, that was not a guess. I had dandelion, lily, sunflower, and peony. Did you have anything on no. the other side? Nobody guessed. I love Chickens. It. <laughs> I know. Well, and then I was telling her, because she says, I don't know really if that was truly what it smelled like or if I was just a kid and I don't know. But here in Oregon, just south of the city, is Shriner's um, Iris Garden. And I have been there, and they have kind of a rusty, um, bronzy that does smell like root beer. And it is just so dang fabulous. It just makes you go, oh. I mean, because you don't think of a flower smelling like root beer. So I had to tell her that, no, there really is one. So probably as a kid, you were great. But I love the fact that um, you got the tattoo of an iris and now you end up doing flower <laughs> photography. <laughs> oh my gosh. Who would have thought? <laughs> I know. So, okay, I've got this one started and yes. to a stopping point. I will be doing a bit of doctoring on these since I've been throwing them together and not really paying attention. So the pictures that you see tomorrow will have a little more stuff to them. But this way we can keep moving because now we've got about 10 minutes. So if you have a question that you haven't typed in there, this is your opportunity. And then I'm going to have Ricky show you how she would photo this one. Notice it is still taller, but not quite as tall and narrow. But it's still, it's going to give her that little bit of control issue. Um, and then we can go from there. So she's yours. All right. Um, so I'm going to pull it back here so I can pull up the phone camera again. One second to do that. What was your first camera that you ever got? That was something somebody wanted to know. Oh. <laughs> um, little disposable film cameras. My family took a trip to Disneyland and I went through those like crazy. And then my parents decided that I needed a real digital camera. They <laughs> <laughs> got tired of paying for film to be there. Yeah. There was nothing on it. Yeah. That's right. So then I had a digital camera that you could take like 25 photos at a time on. And I went through it like crazy. I don't oh. even think it works anymore. I love it. All right. So for this one, I, again, start back with the wider angle, allowing a lot of space around it. I would take a couple photos at this angle, and then I would also come up because I want to be able to see these um, beehive ginger. <coughs> Correct. Yeah. Um, I want to be able to see those. I want to get all of the depth in um, and see like the different levels of the arrangement. And then I also, when I have little things like this or when Leanne puts things like this that are really close to the base, but a really interesting flower, I also like to come down and close and kind of get rid of the Ethereum and drawing more attention from like the basing stuff. Oh, that looks cool. Yeah. So I would come down here, take a photo there. Um, paying attention to where this Ethereum goes, so I might have to move over here more to kind of get rid of it, or come to the complete opposite side and do something like that. That is just amazing, the way we can look at your camera while you're working and see what you see. That's yeah. just like, oh my gosh. 
This is how I look. <laughs> um, I guess we can pull it back up to us. On average, how many photos or shutter clicks do you make to get the shot that you want? Do you have a feel for that? Um, I would say it's anywhere from 10 to 20 per arrangement. And then depending on if I came in close, like how I was just demonstrating, another 10 to 20 of the close-up version. Um, that way I can do like each different shot has like a little bit different lighting exposure um, or like a slightly different angle. So usually by the time I'm done taking photos of the Wednesday live arrangements on Thursday, I have anywhere from like 70 to 80 photos of yeah. each arrangement. <laughs> or not of each arrangement, but like total. Well, and then, okay, so she shoots. We try to do three arrangements every live and she shoots those and she gets the close-ups and some fun little angles with it. And now you've started doing spinning. Mm -hmm which has its own little bit of chaos to it yes <laughs> and then you got to find music to put with it do you think it is a valuable tool for social or is it not worth the effort because right now we're still kind of experimenting what's your gut i like it for like our instagram stories which i think more people look at than just like an instagram post nowadays so i think that's like a fun little tool i'm not sure just as like a normal post how well it works yet but I do enjoy them for like extra little content bits. They're good to have on hand. If we don't have anything else to post, we can just toss one of those up. I love it. But well, I've had so much fun because she'll work, 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 and then my phone goes to ding <laughs> and then I click and there's all these beautiful photos. And I think I didn't have to take those because she did that. If there was, because this is something, I mean, because each of you are trying to shoot your own work. And so you're getting your flowers, you're prepping your flowers, you're designing your flowers, you've got to deliver your flowers, you've got to invoice the people for the flowers, you've got to do this, 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 and this, and you've got to photo the flowers. What, is there anything that you can think of um, that makes it easier so that you just get a shot and you don't have to think about it. Um, any tricks that go through your mind where like, oh, I got all these to do and I've only got this much time. Mm -hmm. How do you simplify? Um, I know this won't work for everyone, but having like a set photo area is probably the easiest because I come in and I know exactly what my lighting should be like for that specific area. Um, I know exactly where I'm setting my arrangement, things like that. Uh, the types of tables that I'm using, anything like that. If you're working on location, that's not going to work as well because you don't know what your background's going to look like every time. But something as simple as just like having a set area that you always take photos in. You know, I think that is something that everybody can do, but it takes a mindset. Mm -hmm. um, I know we have one graduate that they work from a studio at home, mm -hmm. so they're trying to do this on their washer and dryer for all I know I don't know that but um, they know they have to deliver and so they have a little set like you have but theirs is on just like a, a square folding table mm -hmm. and then they have put a backdrop and they have a ring light and they know <clears throat> when they go to go out to their car they have to walk past that table oh okay and so, so they, they set it there turn on the light, shoot it, and dash, because they don't have time to think. Right. But so you're saying you just have something that's preset so you don't have to think about it. It makes mm -hmm. the most sense. Um, how many color backdrops do you think they would need to do it right? Or if they had to pick just one, what would it be? Um, if you had to pick just one, I would say like an off-white cream colored backdrop is probably the best. It's gonna complement any type of arrangement. It's not gonna pull anything away from the arrangement. Even something as simple as like a cloth that's like a, a bed sheet would work as well, that's, as long as it's a lighter color. Um, but then if you do more intricate, crazy types of designs, I would choose backgrounds that are going to be similar in color to your design, so if you work with a lot of pink flowers, have a pink background so that you can always draw out the pink from those flowers, um, or even like a purple or a blue, because those are all flower-friendly backgrounds. 
and then you don't always have to have such a plain color. Gotcha. Which is why we did this sort of off green because mm -hmm. it worked with our logo at the time and it gave a neutral that wasn't white. Yeah, exactly. Which is that. So we've got about one minute. Any questions before we have to say goodbye to Ricky? Yes, yeah, Sandy would like to know what, besides flowers, is your favorite thing to photograph? Landscapes. Is I it love, really? Yeah, I love landscape photography. That was my driving force through photo school was landscape photography. Um, and then through that school, I found still life photography and became to love that. But yeah, I've always loved landscapes. I'm a big hiker, camper, outdoorsy type of person. So taking photos of landscapes just makes sense. Okay, makes good. Any other last minute? Uh, Nora wanted to ask again where you went to school to learn your craft. Uh, I went to Academy of Art University in San Francisco. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, so now you know the face <laughs> on the other side of the camera. And now you know that every single time that you get something in your email box from Floral Design Institute, Ricky has touched it. So feel free to reach out. The email that she uses, I'm going to throw you under the bus again. Um, you know we're all flowers. You have talked to Rose at Floral Design Institute. You've talked to Lily at Floral Design Institute. This is Daffodil at Floral Design Institute. Had I known that Iris was her favorite flower, I could have done that. <laughs> but since I named her Daffodil, she's Daffodil at Floral Design Institute. But if you want to send her a note of thanks for all of the stuff that she shared with you, feel free because we couldn't do it without her. And I want to say thank you because it's been great of having course. you on. Thanks for being brave yes. and showing <laughs> up. I did it. <laughs> you did it. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Susie, Caledonia, Michelle, Carolyn, Hitomi. We'll see you all next week. Teacher Carolyn will be on, am I correct? Yes, Carolyn next week and doing weddings. So Ricky will be on the other side again. And I hope that you can all join us as we all do something we love. See you next week. Thank you.